Hotzenfeller and I'm Sean Foyt. Man, we're here to talk. I am so excited to be here. We're so excited. We to got have you. NorCal coming to SoCal, and um, you know, I, I just want to say first of all, Pastor Phil, you have been such a blessing during this pandemic, mm. during this crazy season uh, in in our state, but also in you know, in our nation, and uh, you've been a real, just just a pillar for us. So I want to appreciate that, your well, church. And you know, I, I think the same about you. I'm thinking like, man, you're out there getting it done. I'm, I remember that, those early ones up there in Portland and Seattle, I'm yeah. going, he's good. Wait a minute, he's doing what? Yeah. What What is this guy doing? Yeah. It was like, there's a fire, Sean is running toward the fire, <laughs> right? And everybody else is running to get buckets. So um, fantastic, and, and I think that one thing that's come out of this is just great partnerships and mm -hmm. new friendships. Amazing. You yes. know, and meeting people and connecting with people that I never probably yeah. would have yeah. any other way. It's so true. I, I uh, you know, courage has been the currency. Mm. And it really has, I mean, I was talking to my wife about this the other day. It's really shifted the dynamics of our, our relationships, our friendships, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, I did. I never thought that worshiping God would be controversial right. in 2020. Yeah. Somehow we got there, and uh, it was controversial in the church, which kind of blew my mind even more. Um, but I feel like I feel grateful in the sense that you kind of find out who your real friends are. Oh, it's so true. You know, you know, there's a scripture. I don't have it exactly to quote, but I'm going to give the essence of it in Corinthians, where it talks about when you come together for at the Lord's table for communion. And it says, divisions exist among you. And it says, but it must be true to reveal those who are true. Wow. And, and you realize that Paul's not saying these divisions were all negative, that there was a positive dimension yeah. whereby the revelation happened. Yeah. And you see that like in the parable in uh, Matthew 13, you know, the wheat and the tares. He says, let them grow up together. The tares will become obvious in time, right? Wow. And so I think that's what we're seeing here. What do you, I mean, I'm kind of picking up on what you said and that's what I have been seeing all along. Yeah, no, it's, it, you know, we've, we've been to 112 cities. Last night was our 112th or maybe 113th and uh, all over America. Mm -hmm. And so there, there is a movement, it's undeniable, mm -hmm. you know, a movement of people that are taking a stand against tyrannical government stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they're taking a stand against fear. Mm -hmm. And there is a bold worship that's coming from the church. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, it, be, leading up to this season, I had spent 20 years in some of the hardest and darkest nations in the world. So uh, my parents were full-time medical missionaries and I'm cut from that same cloth. And so I spent time in Afghanistan, Iraq, North Korea, mm. you know, Saudi Arabia and, and, and underground church in China, underground church in India. And I just learned something from them. And, and I, you know, I never thought that I would be applying some of those principles in America, in my own nation, mm -hmm. that to be honest, I didn't really care that much about until I started having kids. Yeah. Now I have four kids. It's a game changer. And I'm looking at the future, the future handoff to mm -hmm. my children, mm -hmm. especially living in California, you right. know, and seeing like, how in the world did we get here? That's so you true. Know? You know, it's interesting. I had I forgot all about this, but in 2019, I don't know why I just said we're going to do we're, we're going to replicate the underground church of China, okay? And we're going to do like an eight-hour deal, teaching as if this was the only thing you got. Wow. We're not going to let you in after we start. And I don't even know why I came up with this idea, right? <laughs> I, had, I had a guy come in, and he, he was been a part of the underground movement in yeah. China, and he yeah. spoke, and, you know, we fasted, we prayed, we, yeah. we worshiped, and it was all, you know, just stripped-down stuff. Right. And a guy came up to me, like, two weeks ago, and he said, do you think that was prophetic in 19 of what was coming in 20? And I go, I never connected the dots. Wow. I literally never connected the dots. Wow. But, um, but I, I think that God... You know, God says, I do nothing unless I first reveal these things to my, my sons, the prophets, right? Mm -hmm. So God is always giving these little signals out like what's coming. Sometimes it's in scripture. Sometimes right. it's in a prophetic word. Yeah. And I think if we're always good listeners, you know, mm -hmm. of like, what, what are the times I'm living in? What's happening? What's the next season going to look like? Because I'm like you. I didn't call it. You know, if this was a if this was a game at Vegas, I just lost. Yeah. Because totally. I didn't see this one coming yeah. at yeah. all. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I am. I'm thankful for it. Yeah. 
I was uh, doing a, a, an interview on Epoch Times, and the pre-interview was asking me questions like, have you ever done anything in communistic countries? And I said, yeah, I smuggled Bibles in Romania, you know, back in the day. I was in the 10-day war, you know, mm -hmm. in Bosnia, and last plane out of Belgrade, and then I preached uh, down in El Salvador during the Civil War, during the communist stuff, and, and uh, they go, what parallels do you see between China and America? And I just, it just kind of fell out of my mouth, and I said, yeah. What's happened, and I think it's a good thing, is in China you've got the underground church and you've got the state church. In America, what's happened is we have the believing church and the conforming church. Wow. And that I'm seeing come to reality, yeah. and I'm realizing that God is taking away a lot of the props of, I'm going to talk about celebrity pastors right. or, or churches, yeah. and God is bringing back the heart to the church. That's what we found yeah. in our church. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a raw thing. And I... You know, I, I, it's funny because as we've traveled America, I, I always tell people, I'm like, listen, you would not believe like the rawness and the fire that's happening in California. Mm. You know, and I would have never thought it too. I mean, I was shocked. Of course, this, th this movement accidentally began on the Golden Gate, you know, a couple days after Gavin Newsom said, you can't sing in church. And, you know, and that all, was your, and that then, was then your, all of a sudden, that, you know, I, I have these secure messaging apps, you know, that I can stay in touch with all these underground pastors. Mm -hmm. They start texting me. They're like, you better, you, you, you better not listen to him. Remember who you are, wow. Sean, you know, these wow. underground pastors, you know, and at, meanwhile, I, I was so shocked because not that he did what he did, but that so many people were complying, you know? Oh, yes. And so after that took place on the bridge and the next day we came down to Huntington Beach and, you know, I love Southern California. It's amazing. It's super laid back. It's super chill. I, I, I spent a lot of time growing up on the East Coast. A little more feisty there. Mm -hmm. Way more chill here. Check the surf, bro. You know, it's just, it's just chill. I like it. Mm -hmm. But and I haven't experienced the fire and the urgency mm. that I discovered in Huntington Beach. Wow. With a thousand people in the middle of a pandemic, all of a sudden, we started baptizing people. People started getting saved. We started to stand up and say, we're not going to let the government tell us when and how to worship God. Mm -hmm. You know, just reinforcing that that book of Acts, yep. you know, type grit. And uh, I want you to tell people, because you're a pastor in Orange County. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things go through people's head when they hear Orange County, right. pastor, churches. You know, there's a lot of big churches. There's, a, you know, the celebrity church thing. I want you to share with people what you're experiencing here in Southern California, because yeah. I've, been, I've been sharing this everywhere, yeah. and I just think it's amazing. Well, I, I think for us, when, when, the, when that kind of came out and said, you know, it's COVID, well, yeah. we're, we're listening, we're, we don't know what this is, so we're going to kind of, let's, let's go online and see what's going to happen. Right. And then about the end of April, so we're like maybe six weeks into it, I'm going, something's wrong, seriously wrong here. Right. I don't know what it is, but something's wrong. And we decided about May 1st, we're opening up on May 31st, Pentecost Sunday. We just said, well, that's what we're that. going for, yeah. right? And I was with a group of a few other guys, and we were on national TV, and we said, we're going to go, we're going for it. We don't care what the governor says, and, and here's our name in case you want to find us. I mean, yeah. that's kind of how bold we were, <laughs> yeah. right? I'm Phil Eisenbaum, I'm at Influence Church, Anaheim Hills, 92808. So that's me, right? And, and I was surprised how few of us opened. So the estimate was there was about less than 3,000 churches actually opened up out wow. of 30,000 churches in California, wow. 40 million people, think about that, being serviced by 30,000 churches, and only 10% of them are opening up. And so I sat down with my board. I said, guys, I think this is what we need to do. Yeah. And, you know, I got questioned things like, well, what about like Romans 13, where it says, let right. every person be subject to the yeah. governing authority? And I said, I am. I'm completely subject to the governing authority. If they want to arrest me, I'm here. I look good in orange, yeah. right? And then, and then all of a sudden I realized that I'm like standing alone. I'm, and that's how I felt. You know that Elijah moment where he says, I and I only God am right, a prophet. Right. Of, you know, right, and I knew right. it wasn't true, but I just felt like it because all these churches around me just refused yeah. to open yeah. up, Yeah. right? And so we would get just minor criticism. We didn't get a lot of pressure, you know, initially. We had people that would show up and yell at us because we didn't have masks and because we were open and all that kind of stuff. And I just said, this issue is bigger than a health issue. I promise you. This is a constitutional issue. Right. And I like to think about like like a train track. We've got on this train track over here, we've got the Constitution, the First Amendment. And over here, we've got, we've got we're not going to bow to Caesar. 
Right. And we get to run on both those tracks. Right. Most countries yeah. only get to run on one. Totally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They get to run on the Bible one. They totally. don't get to run this one. Right. And I said, I don't care which one I'm going to play. I'm going to play them both. Yeah. You know, if you try to, ch I'm going to go First Amendment, you know, f to some crowd. And on this other one here, I'm going to go Bible. Don't let's, I'm not going to bow to Caesar. But I was so determined, and I remember we've got like three or four mayors in our church from different towns around here. And they go, you know, are you sure about this, Pastor? And I mean, we're behind you, and are you sure about this? And I said, yeah. I, I said, I'm willing to sacrifice yeah. everything in order to stand for Christ. Yeah. And God gave me a scripture out of Jeremiah. It says, if you have run with men and they have wearied you, how will you compete with horses? And if it's a safe land you fall down, how will you compete? How will, what will you do in the jungles of the Jordan? Mm -hmm. And I realized we're running with, horse, uh, with men right now, not horses. This has been a challenging time, but it could be much worse. What will you do when it's much worse? What will the churches do who, who couldn't open in this if right. it's much worse? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's training. I think it's raised up a whole new generation of people. Yeah. It's made me look honestly at Christianity different and better. Yeah. That, that's what's what I've done, and I, I I'm thrilled. I, I think it's the best season for the church. Oh, I agree. What 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 have you seen in the urgency of people like this pressure cooker of the election, COVID, the shutdowns, all? That, I mean, it's like we've had the rug pulled out from under us in a lot of ways. Yeah. Have you seen that in the services? A hunger, a passion. Oh, absolutely. And I and I think I'm going to guess. I don't even know if this number is correct. I'm going to say 25 percent of our people have not come back. I'm going to say they may never come back. Yeah. But they've been replaced by another 50%. Right. Right? Yeah. So you get a you get a net gain of 30%. Yeah. But but the the passion level is different. Yeah. The why do we exist finally got answered. Right. It used to be totally. like who's got the coolest music? Totally. Who's totally. got the coolest yeah. building? You know, who's got this, who's got that? And and now that becomes a secondary issue. Yeah. It, it, it's amazing. I, I mean, I can, can't tell you how many times I've heard the same testimony. Pastors and leaders across America, everyone that opened in the middle of the pandemic, every single one that opened and said, we're not going to back down, their church blew up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it doubled, tripled. I mean, it's just, it's wild. I mean, there's pastors out there, you know, friends of mine, they're young guys that just went for it. They had nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they didn't care about their reputation. And now they're just, they have a voice. You mm -hmm. know, they have, it's like that Billy Graham quote, you know, courage is contagious. Uh, you know, when a courageous man takes a stand, the spines of everyone else are stiffened. So true. You know, and I feel like we're in that season. I find it interesting though, however, you know, for, for as I was referencing the 20 years when we were in the unreached nations around the world, we had so much support, right, from the church. They mm -hmm. were, people were raising money for us, doing benefits, doing things, supporting us to break the laws in other countries, <laughs> knowing we were breaking the law for Jesus yeah. in other countries, yeah. right? Smuggling Bibles, planting churches, yeah. um, you know, preaching the gospel. Now in our own country, when we break the law, some of those same people and same churches that were backing us were like, I, I don't know, now, I don't know. Now, why do you think it is? I, that's what I'm here to ask you kind of leaves me scratching my head. You know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move over to the spiritual realm for a moment. You know, the Bible says, and we both teach this, preach this, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Right. So we know that fear is more than an emotion. It can be an emotion, right. but it's more than an emotion. It's a spirit. And so when a spirit comes in and controls an environment, we've been in countries, I've been, I've preached outside of this the United States, got into countries where go, wow, it feels dark in this area. There's, it, there's a demonic force in this area, right? And it controls the thinking. Right. And I think what's happened through this is we've given access to the spirit of fear as a nation. Right. Right? So now, if, if, you, if the fear is you're doing something dangerous, you're out in public, you're a super spreader, you, whatever these words are, okay, now you're threatening this, this life that I have but I, I don't understand, it's not an emotion. It's not even an intellectual decision. It's a spirit that has taken yeah. over a nation. Right. And I think whenever we give dominion, whenever we give access in that way as a society, right. now what are they gonna do? You are now the enemy. Right. Because you're threatening now my life or the life of someone. I mean, I've had people come up to me and said, I hope you're proud of yourself. You're a super spreader. And I said, well, how come we don't have that happen? 
Why don't we have like, why isn't everybody dead in our church? Why isn't everybody sick in our church? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and I saw it, I, I tell you the thing that really hit me, we, we first opened up, we, we did a survey, I said call every parent on our database, whether they come or don't come in the last two years, just call them and ask them two questions. Number one, would you bring your children back if we opened? Okay, this is, pro this is in May, early May of last year. Um, it, do you have any concerns? Second question, okay? Out of every single parent we called, guess how many of you said, we have no concerns, we're ready to come back? There was only one that said, I have a concern. Wow. Now think about that. So the first thing we did was we said, let's do a one-day um, camp experience for the kids. We're going to do the giant water park. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do it outdoors, so in case you feel a little weird about coming in, we're gonna, we're, we don't know, we're, we're, we're just kind of experimenting. So we do this giant water park, and we have, it sells out in like four days. Wow. And the parents are sitting there and they're watching their kids and they're weeping because their kids are having social interaction, they're right. having fun. Yeah. Guess yeah. what, none of them got COVID. <laughs> and we go, we're ready to move on. We're right. ready to move on to this thing. And so yeah. that accelerated, yeah. when the kids accelerated. When you said, I became a dad, when I think about children or grandchildren and the tyranny of what's yeah. happening, mm -hmm. you know, I'm ready to go to battle. Yeah. So, and, and shifting from that point to, you know, this divisive political season, um, navigating this as a believer, of course, I, you know, ran as a conservative for Congress in California, mm -hmm. which is not easy, and was kind of baptized into this polarization mm -hmm. that I, I did not, I, I guess I wasn't expecting it, maybe I was naive, I don't know. Yeah. I just had thought, man, in a state like this, it's pretty easy to tell like, hey, I wanna take a stand for pro-life, for family, I wanna mm -hmm. take a stand for limited government, you know, uh, overreach, all these kind of things, mm -hmm. religious liberty, I mean, I can go on and on and on. And in my mind, I was just thinking, this is like easy. This is not going to be difficult for me, my family, my friends, my you had some great you know, advice. being on a you label. You some great that advisors I, there, didn't you? <laughs> because I'm like, I mean, if for believers in California, it's not that hard to navigate, right? Yeah. Man, it ended up being crazy, yeah, right? And, and I think that the hardest part about it was the distance of friends that weren't willing to, like, you know, go to bat for us, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then the polarization on a national level of us because, of course, running as a Republican, we're tied to Trump and he's divisive in people's minds and it's just mm -hmm. like this whole thing. Mm -hmm. What is your encouragement to young believers as they navigate this crazy season that we're in right now politically? Mm -hmm. um, and I could talk a lot about the current administration, which maybe we'll get to that, but what's your takeaway right now as a believer? Yeah, I, I'm just gonna go back to the day I was saved. I was yeah. a college student, okay? okay? I was so serious about following Jesus, and I was so fired up about it, I didn't care what got in my way. Yeah. And, and I was gonna follow Jesus with all my heart. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you lose the fire. Right. And I really believe the challenge today is for that young person who's a Jesus follower, follow Jesus, don't follow all these other veins of supposed authority. If, if you follow Jesus, you're always gonna win. Yeah. You're always gonna win. Yeah. You know? and and this peer pressure and this, this science pressure and this political pressure, you know, set it aside. You gotta run ahead of it. Yeah. Because if you run into it, it's gonna stop you every yeah. single time. So I just say, you have to be courage. I yeah. think it was Gladstone, the prime minister from England, who said, of all the character traits, courage is foundation to all the others. Mm -hmm. If you don't have courage, everything else you have doesn't really matter when it comes to characteristics and attributes. Yeah. You have to have courage. And this is, I, this is the season of courage for me. Amen. I do believe that. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? You know, my dad uh, was in 11 major battles, won the, the Bronze Star three times. And I asked him, Dad, you, I said to him, you're a pretty courageous guy. And he said, nope, I just acted and did what I knew to do in the moment. If I'd thought about it, I never would have done it. Yeah. And I think what we have to do is if you've got a good inner core of God, right. You're going to act out what needs to be done. If you've got this inner core that says, I want to be like, I want to be accepted, I want to be the cool Christian, I want to be right, this, yeah. you're going to lose. Right. You are always going to lose because what did Jesus say? If any man's going to follow me, let him take up mm -hmm. his cross 
What do you, what do you do on a cross? You don't just carry it. You, that's to die. Right. You have to die to self mm -hmm. in order to live unto God. Yeah. And I think that's the mandate. Amen. And so when you look at the numbers, you take a, a, a state like California, if the church just engaged, if, everything would change. If, if 30,000 churches would say, we're not closing, right? it's a game changer. Right. If 30,000 churches would just stand, game changer. Said, we're going to vote pro-life. We're going to just pro and change the yeah. game. It's a game changer, you know? And I, when are we going to do that? When do you do that? You do that when it's too late? Oh, I guess we should do that. Yeah. No, you don't have the inner fortitude at that yeah. point. You can't do that. We saw what happened in Nazi Germany. Yeah. The, the church, which was the Lutheran Church of Germany, failed in its moment of testing. Right. It conformed instead of re resi resisted it, and look what, it, what happened to it. It, it yeah. literally killed what was left of that church in Germany. Well, it just, and it's interesting how I think that's what really put the alarm off in my head. It's like we're, we're in the middle of the pandemic and it's like people are okay that strip clubs are essential mm -hmm. and churches are not. Right. And it's like, at what, how, I'm like thinking, how do we get here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm just like in a, bit, a whiplash moment and I'm just thinking, why is everyone else not thinking mm -hmm. this? What's the, what's the first thing that happens when we get away from God? Well, we don't think and, and process information correctly. Yeah. I mean, this is like our computer, you know, and our heart and our soul and our spirit, this stuff is all wound up. And so when I start, when I move away from logic and reason and, and I do that and I don't have the Holy Spirit of God behind me, yeah. what I do is I start, I think, I, I'm going to go back to where we started. Fear is a spirit. It's not just an emotion. Yeah. Right? And f if fear dominates you, everything looks scary. Yeah. You look scary. Yeah. Influence church looks scary. You know, no mask. That looks scary. Everything is scary because I am now driven by a spirit of fear, not of power, yeah. love, and here it sound comes, mind. the sound mind. Yeah. So sound mind. So if, I, if I'm in fear, I don't have love. Yeah. I can't love like God wants me to love. I, I, I don't have really any power because mm -hmm. I'm not walking the spirit of God. And my mind is affected. Yeah. That's why you go, this doesn't make sense. Right. Last thing, what does hold the line mean to you? I think hold the line, uh, if I think about it from my dad, my dad was a 30-year military guy. Mm -hmm. um, we're we are, we are going to die before we give up this ground we've already taken. Ooh. I love that. You don't take the same ground twice. Yeah. You just don't. That's a, that's a military statement. You take that ground, you die for it because you've got guys coming in, reinforcements coming behind you, and you don't want them to have to die on the same ground that you lost some of your comrades on. There it is. So that's what I got. <laughs> that's good. I love you, man. All right, love you too.